Well, hello and welcome to another Rider Cam TV video. And today we are at our friends at Damerals. And Damerals, surprisingly very busy today. Lockdown is starting to ease. All of that jazz. They sold loads and loads of motorbikes over the lockdown period, which is really, really good. So people are still going to be buying bikes and be going to be out on their bikes. And today they've invited us up so that we can have a look at a new range that they've started to um, stock and sell. Look at this. It's a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now, I've not ridden many of these bikes. Royal Enfield has always had an iconic name. And this bike, talking to Mark and the team at Damerals, they have said that Norton have come a long way. They've got R&D departments in the UK. They're plowing lots and lots of money into making sure that things are built right. The chrome styling and the chroming is done really, really well. Um, and they've built a bike, an Interceptor, that is mimicking the Interceptor of old, but bringing some of the modern technology to the bike. But their, to their whole ethos at Royal Enfield seems to be we want to keep all the traditional values of what the bike looks like and what the bike does. Obviously, there's some things like disc brakes and ABS and some things on the ins suspension and, uh, and some things around um, legislation and safety that they've had to put on it, but keeping the bike very true to the, their, uh, their values, their, their way of making bikes and to bring something new to motorbiking, but something new that is also old. Now, I think it looks a fantastic bike. Now this one comes in the two colors now the, these are, you see Mark dancing in the background. These bikes, now this e Interceptor uh, is about 5,700-ish, something like that. Um, with painting, paint on here, you're talking a couple of hundred pounds extra. Um, but for 5,700, 5,800, something around that um, amount of money, certainly in the UK, so that's pounds sterling, you're getting a bike that it's not only a 650, and we've yet to see how smooth it is and how it rides, but a bike that is truly going to turn heads. Lots of bikes turn heads for lots of reasons, but bikes and cars, specifically bikes, with a name like Royal Enfield, are very iconic, not only to um, the, the old, some older generation people, so um, that would have perhaps known or had a Royal Enfield, uh, of old, um, but also people that have known of the name. So anybody involved in biking knows Royal Enfield as a name. There's lots of people that would take Royal Enfields around the world and, you know, they're renowned for being bikes that you can take all around the world and if they break down or if they need to be fixed, there is always someone around that can fix it. There's always bits that you can get. So let's without any further ado, get on the bike, see what it's like. It's twin, you know, it's twin exhaust. It's, oh God, I'm, I'm really quite looking forward to, to riding it. So we are gonna ride this bike. So sitting on it first, the seat is, it, fit, it looks like it's gonna be rock hard. It's hard, uh, but it's not that hard. Let's start it up. Oh, that sounds so smooth. That sounds so smooth. So let's go. Wow. Oh my God. How amazing is that? So this is a 650 Interceptor. So what have we got on board? We have got a Speedle. We have got a Rev Counter. We've got a little LED display, displaying the amount of fuel and the odometer. So pretty basic up front. The controls that we've got are quite min minimalistic but 
keeping in keeping with the old Norton and the old style you don't need stuff on a bike like this you don't need all the whiz bang gadgets and you know bits and bobs that make all of the things like BMW adventures and triumph explorers and stuff that isn't what this bike's about this bike is about enjoying being on an iconic name of bike an iconic bike and enjoying every second and every mile that you spend on it so this massive lorry going past now no doubt this would get up to 70 uh, in no time at all but Mark's riding the 500 scrambler another Enfield that we'll be bringing to you shortly um, so I'm taking it that he doesn't want to get it up to 70 very quick but you know 60 miles an hour no vibrations on the handlebars none through the pegs the switch gear up front very very Honda-esque actually you can tell it's not made by Honda it hasn't got this kind of like the smooth shiny plastic around the, the actual uh, housings but the, the switch gear the buttons do look very much like Honda um, the indicator really easy to find I'm not fishing around for it and I've only been on this bike for a short while um, easy to find it is a bit spongy a little bit spongy but it works and that's all you need there's no gear indicator on the display at the front but there is a neutral of course you do get a flasher with the indicator so you know that's on the flashing headlights really easy to find we'll try the horn in a little bit where I'm not going to scare Mark so switch gear on the right hand side you've got your kill switch and you've got your start switch so really quite basic as we said but I keep saying it through this it's not about having whiz bang gadgets and, and bits and bobs to say hey look at these numbers on this bike see how how much um, horsepower we've got so I've probably say it a few times but it's a very basic bike in terms of the controls um, in terms of the bits and bobs but this I think you've got to remember when you're riding something like this it's not about how fast does it go what's the torque you know what's the horsepower how much fuel does it take has it got a heated seat has it got heated grips has it got this has it got that of course we'll put that all up on the screen so you've got all that information but this bike is so not about talking about numbers this bike to me when i first saw it is i thought i'm really come out overdressed i'm wearing all my klim gear i'm wearing my k-berg helmet my boots my gloves and my um, air vest and i'm thinking i shouldn't be wearing any of this what i should be wearing is a nice pair of jeans a really lovely brown leather jacket an open helmet with a pair of goggles and a pair of gloves because this this bike it, I just I don't know it's hard to explain I I love my bikes there's a bike in this world for anyone it doesn't matter what sort of bike you want to get if you've got a bike you're in the club and there's something that will interest and excite you in any any sort of bike and I really, I really get why people want to ride a almost a classic bike. I've always thought, well, you know, they're lovely to look at, but what enjoyment do you get out of riding it? And I know that this probably isn't a classic bike, but the theme of the bike is classic. The ethos of uh, the company making the bike, the ethos around how they're developing the bike and bringing the old style of bike and as much of the old style of the bike to 2020 and putting some refinements into it but not losing sight of the fact that people will want to buy this because it's an iconic make and it's an iconic brand and I really quite like that so what's it like to sit on as I said the seat is quite hard but it's one of those seats that's quite deceptive 
the seat looks before you get on it like it's going to be a wooden bench but in actual fact it's not that soft it doesn't give that much but it just seems to give just the right amount of comfort to my buttocks so my buttocks are happy everybody likes happy buttocks so they're happy I'm not overly extended if you can imagine it's almost like being in, a, in an upright armchair position to ride not overly extended to reach the handlebars the handlebars and the grips are not too far apart but also not too close the mirrors are round obviously in keeping with the ethos and the the styling of the bike but I can see everything that I need to see I haven't got too much of my arm in the in the wing mirrors at all if you wanted a little bit more there is probably about half an inch each side that you could move that as well as the levers over to the right and the left just to give yourself that little bit more uh, vision behind you but for me it's quite good now obviously this being a naked bike you are going to get a lot of wind and air in your face but that's exactly what you need on a bike like this you need to be able to experience being on the bike being right at the front of the bike having nothing in front of you that that will put anything in the way nothing that takes away from the fact that you are riding what purports to be quite an old bike but with modern technology somewhere in there now I have noticed that the foot pegs are a little bit they're in exactly the right place my knees are bent in the right way I don't feel crunched up at all I don't feel too spread out the foot pegs are they seem a little bit long now that's just that, that's just personal preference because the one that the foot pegs on the BMW that I ride are really quite small. These are quite big, quite chunky. They've got nice rubber on them to stop um, any vibrations coming through. But what I have noticed is that the gear lever, although I'm not fishing around to try and find it with my foot, I have noticed that that really is probably quite probably about that much if you can see it. Um, away from the the foot peg so the first time that I got on it to be able to fish around and try and find find it was a, a, a little bit of a chore uh, but it was once that was once now I know where it is it's really easy to find the suspension it's really quite something else actually over these bumps uh, you know it's not the smoothest ride in the world and it's far from being the bumpiest road in the world but you know it feels like I'm on a cushion of air I can feel some of the road I can feel some of the bumps so I still feel connected with the road but it does give me this feeling like I'm just gliding across the top in this modern modern old bike I really do like, like it and the power so I'm going to let Mark get on a little bit and I'm just going to drop it down to another another gear and then I'm going to just see how quickly we go so let's see what happened so that is really nice and do you know what it's got a nice sound to it it's just like a really really nice very very low very very quiet burble so the power delivery is really smooth now I I would assume that on a bike that purports to be quite an old bike, although it's a new one, it's new technology, so it will be smoother, I would have thought that it would be, have a very pop, 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 pop sound and, and kind of that sort of feeling and you kind of pull away and as you're pulling away it will pr you, you know that those pots are working hard to give you that, um, that torque and that horsepower and to pull you away and give you that power delivery. But this is really smooth and I mean really smooth the throttle isn't one of those uh, fly-by-wire throttles it's not one of those throttles that is um, either on or off um, you know with some sort of aggression it's very very smooth to ride
and it just falls into corners literally just falls into corners so you know people people use counter steering all the time whether you know what it is or whether you don't if you're riding a bike you have used and do use counter steering every time you ride the bike but this just falls into the corners I mean it's so nip it I mean look at this you could just throw it about and that's a 650 it feels like it weighs next to nothing and it's just ticking away underneath now some people might say well you know these Nortons they're really not very reliable you know I know they take them around the world but they've got to put bits on them all the time and they're always going wrong well actual actual fact they are quite reliable bikes they're as reliable as anything else but what you're talking about on this bike predominantly and I would assume hopefully I haven't assumed wrong is that the people that might necessarily buy this bike they're not going to do big tours like Mark and myself do they're not going to do um, you know thousands of miles a year they're probably going to do you know a couple of thousand miles a year and spend some time on a Saturday evening drinking some beer whilst they're cleaning the bike getting ready for the Sunday ride that they're going out on you know that's to me that's what these bikes are for now obviously to ever anybody a bike is what you get out of it and what you want from it it's a busy one today Oh, and you can stand up on it. I had to stand up because my hip suddenly decided to say that it was going to pop out. So the running cost for these bikes. Well, it's got a good range on the tank. Fortunately, petrol is really cheap at the moment, so that's good. Um, but as I said earlier, I don't think this bike is a bike that you're going to buy, or a lot of people are going to buy. There will be exceptions, obviously, that a lot of people are going to buy to do 20 or 30 mile, thousand miles on. I, th I think that this is the sort of bike that people are going to buy to do, you know, perhaps one, two thousand miles a year. It's going to spend most of the time in pride of place in the garage. For some people, pride of place in the front room. And why not if you've got a bike that you really love that much? The running costs, pretty good. Repair costs, uh, not too bad. Uh, I can't give you any actual figures, but apparently they're not exorbitant. They're quite reasonable, good prices. Um, the only thing being is that the servicing is about four to 5,000 miles apart. Well, hello. Hello. Welcome to another Rider Cam TV video. I know you've all missed us. We're socially distanced, Mark's over in the field somewhere. <laughs> With the Actually, zoom on. I'm not going to say I'm in Devon again because that'll upset people. But forgive my um, lockdown hair and all that stuff, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we here to do today? We are here looking at the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Wow, an Interceptor 650 sounds like racy, that doesn't well, it? Yeah, I, I tell you what, I've never been, um, never been somebody that knows anything about bikes. <laughs> That's not going to change. Um, I've never really given Royal Enfield another thought because to me, they're an iconic brand. They're an old brand. They're not made here. You know, you see them going across the world and breaking all the time and being fixed. And, you know, there's always bits that you can find for them, but they just keep going. But to a lot of people, they're an iconic brand, aren't they? A real iconic brand. And I've never really had the fortune of having anything to do with Royal Enf Enfield or being anywhere near one or even riding one. And today's been quite a treat, really, because look at the style of it. I mean, that is, isn't it a beautiful bike, Mark? Yes, it is. It is. My dad had bikes like this when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, yeah. He had Nortons and yeah. ESAs, and I, I, and I said, you know, people come up to you and talk to you about motorbikes. Oh, I had a, no, a BSA 350 or a Bantam 350. I, I have no idea what they look like, but in my head, they all look like yeah. this. And when I walked up to it, I thought, that's a really old bike. But is it? No! No, it's a new bike. It's a 20-plate bike, so it's a 2020 bike. And this is apparently 
Uh, as, as I was saying when I was riding it, that Royal Enfield's ethos about making their bikes are very much, they're keeping it where it used to be, but refining bits and bobs. And, and they've got an R&D department in the UK and plowing lots of money into making sure that the bike is as iconic as people hold it, uh, as high as they hold it in their esteem. I think it just looks a fabulous bike. It really does. The chrome, apparently it's a really good chrome works. It's really smooth. Mmm. <laughs> I <laughs> like it. Exhaust pipe fondling. Really, really smooth. I mean, it's running on Pirellis and all that sort of stuff. Do you know, it's one of the smoothest bikes that I've ridden in quite a while. This seat, well, let's, let's start from the front. Let's start from the front, so. No LEDs here. No. No, but then that's in keeping, isn't it? Yep. You know, LEDs would probably be cheaper than bulbs, wouldn't it? But, you know, this isn't the bike. I was saying on the video, Mark, that this isn't the sort of bike to talk about how many miles an hour it does and what torques it's got. We'll put all that up on the screen. But this is a bike about enjoyment, isn't it? And when I walked up to it, which just <laughs> leaves out the way. <laughs> when I walked up to it, I thought very much that I'm overdressed. I should be wearing, Bar you know, yeah, like a barber jacket and an open face pilots, helmet. Pilots, uh, yeah, jacket. yeah. And so no LEDs or, or anything like that. I'm going to put it up on the centre stand. Yes, there's a centre stand. Wow. But I'm going to move it down here a little bit because I'm under the tree. So, no effort at all. So, come round here, Mark. Come round to the theatre of enjoyment. <laughs> theatre of enjoyment. <laughs> so... We have got a, now I keep saying this on the video, a bog standard, no frills kind of bike, but it really isn't because the, the no frills or the frills come from how you ride it, aren't they? And the enjoyment that you take out of it. This isn't the bike to have all these gadgets and gizmos everywhere. This is a bike to just enjoy because it's a bike, isn't it? We have got a Speedo, a rev counter. We've got all the, oblig uh, the obligatory lights. Yes, it's got ABS the um, oil, the battery, uh, the engine, you've got the indicator lights that come on so you know that you've got indicators there. And then you've got a tiny little LED display which is displaying your miles and your fuel. What more do you want? There's no um, gear selector or anything on there but what more do you want? Coming over to where Mark is quite expertly the recording. Objects that may appear closer or something. In yeah. They are two metres apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we ought to have on there now. So the mirrors I found really good. They're round, in keeping with everything on the bike. And I found that I probably had, I don't know, about an inch of my arm in the mirror, but I could see everything I needed. But look, if you wanted to move them over, yes, you'd be moving all of the, all of the um, levers and stuff over, but you would be gaining that much anyway on both That's sides good, yeah the switch gear you've got a kill switch and a starter on the right hand side flasher full beam indicators and a horn on the left hand side and the thing that struck me when i was riding it, this is these buttons are very much like honda mm, look at very much like honda but they perhaps haven't got the finish of a honda unfortunately. However, the buttons have, and they've got a nice click, so that's good. One it's all about the click. It's all about the click. <laughs> One thing I did notice is that the throttle, you know on these, um, these newer bikes where they ride by wire, yep. or fly by wire, or whatever they call it, as you put them on and off, sometimes they're really aggressive, aren't they? And it's really hard to get that smoothness. This is just right, really, really smooth, on and off, the power delivery is really great. It's got loads of torques and horsepower that we'll put up on the screen. It's a really nice place to be. And then when you sat on it, you're not too bent up. Really quite a nice position to be sat. Knees are just the right size, not the right size, right? <laughs> my knees are the right size for my oh, body. My knees are just the right <laughs> size for my knees. Yeah. <laughs> my, well, they're not too folded over. You don't feel like you're bent. Although when we came, um, 
across one of the junctions, we'd stopped and I'd put my leg down. I had to stand up because my hip was going to pop out, but that's because I'm old. But you can stand up and ride it as well. I quite enjoyed that for a couple of seconds. Um, and you're not leaning over too far. It's almost like you're being, you're in like a, a, a GS type world. Position. Yeah, yeah, good riding position. And you can obviously move forward and back. <laughs> like that. As much, <laughs> as much as you like. Um, but the seat looks like a horrible board, doesn't it? It does look It's actually, I wouldn't say the most comfortable seat that I've sat on, but on par with the GS seat in terms of keeping me in the right place and me not feeling uncomfortable at all. I mean, we've ridden, it for, ridden these bikes for quite a few miles today, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And it's really comfortable, got no back pain or anything. The thing that surprised me with this is that I would have thought, because this bike is very much purporting to be quite an old bike, I would have thought that it would be really vibrating yep. up through my f feet, through my hands. There is nothing. Wow. Absolutely nothing. I don't think I've been on a bike for a long time that we've test ridden where the, there has been nothing. It's been just really that smooth. Really like it. It does look really nice with the twin exhaust on it. Yeah. The only thing that I didn't like on riding it, because there's always a downside to everything, these pegs, they seem to be in the right place for you to sit, but then when you come to put your foot down, you've got to, you've got to be aware that they stick out a little bit further. I mean, obviously that's semantics, isn't it? You're going to get used to it when you're owning it and you're out riding it. And then if you come around the other side, Mark, the other thing that I found a little bit strange, only the first time that I rode it was this here. Now, obviously it's got one, which is great, it's the standard one down and several up. Several. <laughs> several, yeah. But there's really a tiny gap in between for you to get your foot in to select the gear. Oh, wow. And that kind of foxed me. The very first few seconds on the bike when I went to change up to second, really had to concentrate on where it was. After that, it was fine. After that, it was fine. Oh, I, I really like it. The engine, the casings, Come, come, come hit them up. I mean, they're pretty iconic, aren't they? They are, they yeah, are. Old school. And do you know this bike is about 5,700 something like that pounds in the UK? Yeah, that is. A little bit extra for the paint, and they do several different iconic paint jobs. And obviously, the iconic, everybody knows the, the style of the original ones, they do that. Um, but all of this, I mean, look, this, this is what I would expect from a bike. I know nothing about these old bikes. But this is the sort of finish that I would expect on the outside of the engine. And it looks like it's carburetted, doesn't it? But it's not, it's all injected. You know, it's got all the modern con, mod cons and stuff, but it just looks like you're riding an old bike. And I reckon you could turn up to anything in this. And I was saying on the, uh, on the video, Mark, that the running costs, it's got a good sized tank. It'll go forever. The parts aren't expensive, but they're not cheap. They're not the most expensive parts to get. The only downside is that the, um, the service intervals are like four or 5,000 miles apart. So you're gonna be servicing it quite a bit. But I don't think they're the sort of people that would buy this bike. It would be the people who are doing lots of miles on it. Well, I think there's gonna be a lot of people doing a lot of miles on it. But but there's not also- gonna be worried necessarily about the service intervals? No. And there's also going to be a lot of people that are going to buy this bike to do two or three thousand miles a year, to take it to rallies, to go out on it in the weekends, to enjoy what this bike's about. And we've always said on these videos, haven't we, Mark, that there's a, there's a bike for everybody and everybody gets their own enjoyment out of their own bikes. And it's not just about riding it, is it? It's about having it in the garage. And especially if you are, and not everybody's going to buy them, but if you are an older person that remembers what, Royal Enfield was yeah. and now you own one but it's a new one that you can go out and ride in today's world you could almost put on your your old kit and imagine being back there what does it sound like it sounds really good do you want to hear it I do yeah that's why I asked okay <clears throat> turn that one off I will put it into neutral
but that sounds really good, doesn't it? And now, this is one of the best bits. Mark, you're about to be blown away. I am. My God. Now. Twin horns. Twin horns. That's outrageous. I know. How amazing. <laughs> Never so. <sell. laughs> Yeah, but why, you know, Royal Enfield are obviously making this bike for under £6,000 for a bike that if you went to Honda or that sort of thing, you'd be paying, paying what, 10, 9, yeah. 10, £11,000 for this style of bike. Yeah. You're getting that style of bike with the iconic name, up to date mechanics, yeah. up to date machinery. And they're putting on those sort of things that mean that you can be safe on the road as well. So yeah. why can't others? I don't know. I don't know. I do like it. You I like do it, like it. Yes. Cool. I do like it. Even from the back, it looks nice. Now, to move out of the way for a distance. These are the things that make it look old to me, because narrow yeah, they they're like really narrow. You know, like you would imagine on a on a really old vintage bike. But how insane is that? For under six grand, you could have what you would class as a vintage bike but riding brand new technology, yeah. or not brand new technology, but you know, up to 2020 kind of standards, really. It had no problem keeping up with the speed limit and the power delivery, it's just uh, sublime, would that be a good word? Would be, don't know what it means, but it's all right. <laughs> but it just, it just delivers the power really, really well. And I'd slowed down because I was following Mark on one of his bikes <laughs> um, and left quite a bit of a gap and then I didn't dump the throttle because it's not my bike and it's a new one, but I put the power on and it was just, it just glid, glided Slid. seamlessly. No, it didn't slide anywhere. <laughs> didn't slide anywhere. Yeah, I really like it. Cool. Hopefully you will too. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button wherever that is. And if you're interested in buying one, Damrell's Motorcycles in Indian Queens down in Cornwall, have a look at their website, pop in and see them. Steve and Mark and the team in there are really, really friendly and they're really proud of these things and they are selling like hotcakes. So, see you in the next one.